So what is going on my fellow collectors? How is everybody doing today? Daredevil19 here and today we're going to be taking a look at the Bandai Tamashii Nations SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Kid Goku. So let's get into it right away and start off with the box. So we do get a basic style box when it comes to the SH Figure Arts DBZ line. So we do get the window right there in the front of the box and on the window in white does say SH Figure Arts and Son Goku. On the right side we do get some images of the Kid Goku figure. Then we do get the warning blah 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 blah, Toy Animation, Drag Ball, Tamashii Nations, and Bandai. And then here is the bottom of the box with a cool image of the Goku figure there. And then here is the top of the box with another image of Goku. And then here is the one side of the box. And the box is pretty heavy. And then the other side of the box here does have some more images of the figure there. And then the back of it does show a bunch of cool poses. You can get the figure into along with some of the accessories. But anyway, that is the packaging. Let's get this figure open to take a closer look at one of the best characters ever created. Alrighty, taking a closer detail look, and I think Tamashii Nations did such a spectacular job with this kid Goku, and I think this is definitely, as of now, one of my favorite SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Z figures in the line. They really just killed it with this figure. The face sculpts, I think, all turned out great. The sculpt of them look awesome, and then the paint's nice and clean wherever there is paint on the face. The hair looks good, very nice sculpt all throughout it, as you can see there. And... I feel like the head is a little too big, but if I recall, Toriyama did draw Goku's and Krillin's heads much larger compared to the other characters and compared to their bodies, so I feel like it is accurate, but I just feel like the head is so large, especially when I compare it to the other figures, you'll see how much larger his head is compared to the other characters. Uh, now for the torso here, they did a good job all throughout the gi. My major complaint about the detail is there's no shading at all throughout the entire figure and to me that is pretty disappointing because most of the recent releases have had paint shading on them I think besides Yamcha so I don't understand why this kid Goku doesn't have any paint shading at least on his gi you know what I mean so uh, it does kind of suck for people who do appreciate paint shading. I do like the sculpted wrinkles all throughout the gi on the sleeves and around the torso. We do get the symbol. Very nice paintwork on that. My only complaint, I don't know if I'm wrong or not, but I believe it's white in the background and not like a yellowish type color. Same with on the back. We'll take a look at the back now anyway. But you see it is a more like yellowy type color. I, I believe it's, they're always white if, if I'm not mis mistaken. I could be wrong and maybe in Dragon Ball it was more of a yellowish type color, but... Uh, the symbol looks great on the back there, and like I said, the sculpted wrinkles on the gi look very well done also. Then we do get his belt here, and it is like Yamcha's, so you can articulate it, so I do appreciate them doing that. But very nice sculpt all throughout the belt there. And then we do get two different tails. Uh, neither of the tails do come on the figure out of the packaging, but I'm just going to leave it on the figure for now. But I, I, they did a nice job sculpting it. I just wish they added some shading on it because it really would have made the tails look so much better. It's similar to the 2.0 Scatter Vegeta and Nappa, they didn't have any shading or anything on their tails either. Uh, now for the arms here, I think the arms turned out really good, especially for this being a much smaller figure. They really worked in a lot of stuff very well, especially the articulation. But the, the arms look pretty good, especially at the shoulder and the elbow joints. It blends in very well throughout the rest of the arm. Then we do get his blue wristbands, and I really dig that blue paint that they used, and a nice sculpt on it as well. Now for the pants here, we do get some nice sculpted wrinkles all throughout it. You can tell he is wearing baggy pants, and I do like the way that looks, so great job all throughout the pants on the front and the back there. And the knee joints, look they don't look that bad, actually. So those turned out pretty good. Now for the feet here, we do get his Kung Fu shoes, and whoops, his tail popped right off. All you got to do is peg it back in like that. But we do get his Kung Fu shoes, and once again, I love that blue and very nice clean paint where the blue meets the white on his Kung Fu shoes there. And then on the bottom of them, we do get some sculpted lines. So overall, I think Tamashii Nations really knocked it out of the park with this kid Goku. It's pretty much perfect when it comes to the detail. My only major complaint is there's no shading at all throughout the entire figure and to me that's pretty disappointing but other than that like I said they killed it with this figure and I can't be any more happy with how this Goku turned out but anyway let's continue on moving on to the accessories we get a ton of great stuff included with this kid Goku so we do finally get an entire Tamashii Nation stand we do get the base then we do get two regular arms as you can see right there then we do get this extra articulated third arm which is meant to go on the top of Nimbus Cloud to clamp on to Goku while he's sitting 
or standing on it. And then the two regular ones are meant to peg in the bottom of Nimbus Cloud so it could look like Nimbus is flying Goku around. So that's the main reason why they included the stand here. And since we're talking about Nimbus Cloud, let's go over this one next. And they did a very nice job with the Nimbus Cloud here. Very nice uh, paint shading all throughout it. And the sculpt of it looks very well done. Also, it does actually look like the flying Nimbus. Then this piece on the end can swivel around, so I do like how they did make that articulated. And the third extra articulated arm, that pegs in right here on the top, so when Goku's sitting and standing on it, you can clamp it onto Goku. But he actually can balance on it fine, so you really technically don't need it. And then the bottom, we do have the two peg holes for the regular legs on the stand to peg on the Nimbus Cloud, so it could look like it is flying around and Goku does stand on it perfectly fine as you can see right there oh well done there we go see he balances on it perfectly fine so you really don't need uh, the extra articulated arm that they gave us but it is cool that they included it and if you were curious if an adult Goku can stand on the Nimbus cloud he really doesn't fit but you can make it work and he does balance on it so if anybody was curious if you could put an adult Goku on the flying Nimbus you can also do that as well so we do get those and then we also get three alternate faces and i do wish they gave us a fourth basic looking face because as you can see we don't get a basic looking face so i do wish that they did include that but what we do get we do get the angry face here which comes on the figure out of the packaging which is my favorite out of all three of them and we did take a look at it already and they did do a very nice very nice job with the detail all throughout it and the way you interchange his face is pretty basic for dbc figures you just take the front or the bangs of the hair off, then peg the face on, and then peg the bangs back on, as simple as that, and then that's how you take it off. So, very uh, basic for the DBC figures. Then we also get a happy, smiling face here, and they did a very good job with the paint and sculpt once again. So, nice job with the happy face. And then we do get another happy face, but with his eyes closed, or his laughing or giggling type face. And once again, very good job with the detail. All throughout it so we do get those three interchangeable faces and then we do get two alternate tails so we do get his tail just hanging around which is my favorite out of the two and we already took a look at it already and like I said it would have looked much better if there was shading on it but the sculpt of it does look very well done and then we do get this one here where he's kind of like gripping onto something like his power pole or maybe like a tree branch or something like that so it is cool that they gave us two different tails and like this one could have used shading as well but the sculpt of it also is very well done and the way you get his tails on they're just on a ball peg so you just peg it into the back of his butt like that and then there you go as simple as that and they're both articulated of course so we do get those and then we also get the four star dragon ball and finally tamashi nations gave us a Damn Dragon Ball with one of these DBZ figures and really happy that they finally did include it and it is a uh, orange translucent plastic and they did paint on the four stars on there and they did a, a really good job with it so very happy that we're finally starting to get some Dragon Balls and hopefully with the other Dragon Ball characters like Master Roshi, Bulma and stuff they give us the other numbered Dragon Ball so we do get that and then we do get the power pole and then we do get the power pole that is holstered and they did a pretty good job with it. The rope looks pretty good. Nice sculpt all throughout it. And then the sheath for the power pole looks, looks okay. And then you do see the power pole kind of hanging out the top right there. And it is just pegged in. So if you have him using the power pole, you just unpeg it. And when he's not using it, you just peg it right back in. And the way you get this on Goku, you got to pop his head off like that. And then slide the power pole under his arm and then over his neck. And then just pop his head back on. As simple as that. So we do get that power pole. And then we do get the actual power pole that he will whoop your butt with. And it is just a red plastic uh, bow staff power pole. And it looks fine. I don't think any paint is really needed on it. Because this is how it did look in the anime. And they did a pretty good job with it. It is a bit flexible. If you, but if you bend it too much, it will snap. So we do get that. And then we finally get... 14 interchangeable hands. We do get a pair of fists, of course, which come on the figure out of the packaging. A very nice sculpt all throughout these. There's no paint detail or anything on them. And his hands are pretty easy to interchange, but they are also a bit difficult because the wrist joints are so small, but when you try to peg it in, the joint will hinge back and forth, so it can be a bit irritating. 
but I wanted to let you guys know when you articulate the figure or interchange the hands and stuff, I would just be extra careful because they are much smaller joints compared to the regular size DBZ figure. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. But his hands aren't too difficult to swap out. So we do get the fists. Then we do get the gripping hands where the thumb is molded together to the fingers, which is meant for him to grip onto the power pole. A nice sculpt all throughout these. And then we also get some Kamehameha hands, of course. You can't have these without a Goku figure, or it would be an incomplete Goku figure. And you can kind of see the fingernail sculpted on there, too. So very good job with the uh, sculpt detail on those. And then we do get a pair of, like, martial art stance-type hands. Very nice sculpt, once again, on these here. And then we also, whoops, also get some open palm blast hands. Very good job on those. And then we do get some karate chippity chop chop hands good job on these as well and then finally we get one of my favorite hands the peace sign hands and I really love that they included these with this kid Goku and very nice job with the sculpt detail you can see the fingernail sculpted on the index and middle finger there so those are all the awesome accessories included with kid Goku let's keep moving on with the rest of the review shall we now for the height of Son Goku to the top of his head, it looks like he's just shy of 4 inches tall. Then to the very top of his hair, it looks like he's just shy of 5 inches tall. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Super Saiyan Goku, the Super Saiyan God Goku, Krillin, the Battle Damage Gohan, and the Cyberman. And then here he is compared to the SH Figure Arts Tien. Yamcha, the San Diego Comic-Con Piccolo, and Golden Frieza. And then here he is compared to a bunch of the other SH figure arts, Dragon Ball Z, and Super figures. And then here he is compared to the SH figure arts, Awakened Warrior, Super Saiyan Goku, and the Mezco 112 Deadpool. Anyway, there's some quick comparisons. Let's keep moving on with the rest of the review. So now for the articulation, and surprisingly, we get some excellent movement with this kid Goku, especially for it being a much smaller figure. Now we do have two joints at the neck. The lower neck joint is pretty much useless. It really doesn't move around that much, but the upper neck joint is very different compared to what we usually see for SH Figure Arts DBZ figures. So we do have a ball peg, I believe, that connects into the head, and we do have another ball peg that connects to that, and then that ball peg connects to a ball hinge that is on a peg right there that pegs right into the neck there. So we do get some decent neck movement, not the best, but I mean, there is some articulation there. So he does look down about that much and then up about that much. And then we do get some really good pivot there. And then of course it does swivel the lower neck joint. Like I said, it's, it's pretty much useless. It just goes forward and back just a tiny bit. That's it. And then pivots just a tiny bit so that's all the lower neck movement you're gonna get so we do get that de decent movement at the upper neck joint there then we do get a point of articulation at the torso right around the abdomen and Goku can crunch forward pretty good actually with that joint there and then goes back just a tiny bit and then we do get some really nice pivot up there actually and then of course it does swivel now the waist here does go forward and back pretty good so it goes forward about that much so with both joints he does crunch forward decently in both joints doesn't really go back a whole bunch so you do get better forward movement at the waist and torso then we do get a little bit of pivot at the waist there and then of course it does swivel and then like I said before the the belt is on a peg so it can swivel around I do like that they do that and then the tail is on a uh, ball peg so you can move that all around as well now for the arms here we do have a very nice butterfly joint at the shoulders there and you can get his arms to crisscross so you could have him do the Kamehameha so I do like that point of articulation on the figure and it doesn't really move that much at the shoulder you do get a tiny bit of movement there but the arms do go out to the sides a lot more than 90 degrees so that's definitely good they do go up and down we do have bicep swivel we have a single jointed elbow that bends in about 90 degrees and doesn't really swivel at the joint on the elbow and then we do have a ball hinge on the wrist a very tiny one so it does swivel and hinges back and forth so so far really nice movement with this kid Goku now for the legs here on the instructions they do tell you when you kick the legs forward and move the legs up this little piece here it doesn't really peg in and it can fall out I'm just gonna leave his tail off for now but this little piece here 
it can fall out and when it does all you do is just pop it back in simple as that so it does say it on the directions so they do give you a heads up about it but Goku can kick forward a lot more than 90 degrees so that is definitely awesome goes to the back almost 90 degrees in doing the splits here he can't Jean-Claude Van Damme it but it almost goes up to 90 degrees which is pretty good and then we do get an upper thigh swivel we do have a single jointed knee that bends back a little more than 90 degrees and the joint does swivel a tiny bit where it connects into the thigh and where it connects into the lower leg now for the ankles here we get some very nice articulation like I said I I'm surprised at how well the articulation is on this figure but we do get a swivel at the ankle I believe it's a uh, ball hinge that's on there yes it is but we do get the swivel there it does hinge up a really good amount and then same with hinging down and then we do get some amazing ankle pivot that's almost a 90 degree bend right there and then we do have a very tiny toe hinge so overall you get some excellent movement with this kid Goku and like I said for the size of the figure and the posing options you have is just incredible to me and I'm really glad that Tamashii Nations pretty much put their all into making this figure because you can pretty much get them into any type of pose you would like and I'm about to show you some of them right about now but anyway that is my review of the SH Figure Arts Dragon Ball Kid Goku hope you enjoyed it if I had to rate this figure between a 1 through 10 I'd have to give it a 9.5 if you would like to know the price and where to buy this figure I did have mine imported from Japan from Ami Ami but I do have another one pre-ordered with Ageless Geeks once he gets the US release version of this in stock which will probably be in about a month but he does have the Japan release right now at his booth at Frankensons if you do live in California but don't forget if you ever do buy something from angelskeeks.com to enter in code name daredevil and you will get yourself a 5% off discount I will put more information in the description below and if you would like to support the channel don't forget to subscribe and click on that notification bell and if you liked it give it a thumbs up if you didn't like it just give it a thumbs up anyway because action figures are awesome but thanks for watching I will see you later on Goku on the right side we do get some more images more images what the heck it's the first images of the figure that we saw on the box what am I talking about and we do get the warning blah 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 toy animation Dragon Ball to my play and blah 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 on the other side here with a bunch of blah blah <laughs> the heck was that? And I think Tamashii Nations did a spectacular, whoops, dropped the Dragon Ball, you bucka. Oh, no, and it fell again, you son of a beep. So now for the articulation as, and God damn it! And you guys know how they're all articulated, of course, to the third. Damn, damn it! So we do get this one that does come on the figure out of the packaging, which is as like, which is as like, which is, which is Goku's like, the four star dragon boom and then the top piece here I don't know what that's for actually I guess I'm gonna have to look it up